Okay, hello everyone. This is the CircuitPython Weekly for November 21st, 2022. This is time of the week where, every, where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm your host, Liz. Uh, I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on a variety of things, and this is also the first time I will be hosting a meeting. So thank you all for allowing me to host. Uh, what is CircuitPython? CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit. So if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafruit.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In NoteStock, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you would like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a NoteStock to accompany the meeting and recording. It's uh, pinned in the channel if you need to access it. Notes document contains timestamps go along with the video, so you can use the doc to view only the parts of the video that interest you most. Uh, the meeting tends to run 45-60 minutes, so this gives you the option to skip around. After each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Check the pin messages, find the latest docs, so that you can add your notes for the following meeting. If you wish to participate, but cannot attend, you can leave hug reports, status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. And this meeting is held in five parts. First part is community news. This is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Second part is state of CircuitPython, libraries, and Blinka. This is a statistical overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by numbers, separate from what we're all up to. And third part is hug reports. Hug reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things folks are doing, taking time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Fourth part is status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we've been up to, take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting, and what you're be up to over the next week or until the next meeting. Fifth part is in the weeds. And in the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be something you've identified ahead of time as too long for status updates. And that covers how the meeting will run. Uh, and with that, I'm going to go into community news. Uh, so we have the micro Python on microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, we're also very close to 10,000 subscribers, uh, which is very exciting. Um, and some highlights for this week's newsletter. Um, Moo editor version 1.2.0 is going to be released has been released, rather. Uh, the Moo team has released a new version of the Moo Python editor. This release includes snake mode, uh, fixes some minor bugs, addresses some usability gremlins, and adjusts some capabilities to make things tidier. Personally, I enjoy using Moo, so I'm excited about that. Uh, Project of the Week is a general purpose chip debug interface using CircuitPython. That was from Mastodon. Uh, and then there's going to be a new MicroPython course coming soon from Kevin McAllier, and he is looking for beta tester. So if that's something you're interested in, you might want to look into that post in the newsletter. Um, the microcontrollers newsletter goes out via email on Tuesday mornings. You can visit Adafruit daily to subscribe to the newsletter. And thanks to Anne for putting the newsletter together. If you have any Python on hardware projects to share or find content you'd like to see included, please consider contributing to the newsletter. You can open PR on GitHub, uh, tag Anne at Anne underscore engineer on Twitter with hashtag CircuitPython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. Uh, and I'm just going to quickly put the link to the newsletter into Discord. And up next, uh, that's going to do it for community news. Uh, next up is State of CircuitPython, Libraries, and Blinka. So, for say CircuitPython, uh, there were 33 pull requests merged, uh, 20 authors, uh, and 10 reviewers. Uh, and some new folks that were contributed uh, were S-OL, uh, D-O-M-D-F Coding, Aaron Salinkas, and Jingleman's Sweep. There were also 23 issues 
uh, closed by 13 people and 21 opened by 16 people. Uh, and then up next is going to be the core. Uh, and I meant to ask who is going to be reading the core. I could read it if you'd like. Uh, that'd be great. Thank you, Dan. OK. So in the last week, there were 20 pull requests merged by 12 authors. Uh, I think I recognize most of these people so far. Um, and there were five reviewers. There are 27 open pull requests. About half of these are draft. A third to half of these are drafts. So it doesn't mean that we're just sitting on our hands or anything. There were 17, 12 issues closed by six people and 10 open by eight people. There were 572 open issues, and those issues are classified as in milestones. There are uh, no issues in the 7.3.x milestone, so there's no really urgent bug we feel like needs to be fixed in the 7.3.x stable release. There are 29 open issues in 8.0. There are 15 open issues in 8.xx, which means post 8.0. There's one issue open in 900. That's probably just a reminder that we're going to make some change when we start on 900 development, probably an API change. Uh, there are 20 open issues in libraries, 501 long term issues. Um, support has four open issues. And uh, there's one issue in third party uh, software that means we're awaiting something that we have no control over. And two issues need to be triaged and haven't been assigned a milestone. And that is it. OK. Thanks so much, Dan. Uh, next, we're going to go to Katni for the report on libraries. Thanks, Liz. This section refers to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore uh, CircuitPython underscore, and a couple of extras like the community bundle and our cookie cutter. Uh, across all those repositories, we had 13 pull requests merged by nine authors and nine reviewers. Um, in terms of uh, timing, most of those were uh, only either a few down to zero days old, so we, uh, we spent some time keeping up on, on new pull requests. And that leaves us with 141 open pull requests. Um, there are some changes being made across the libraries, and that's um, why that number jumped so high uh, since last week. Um, that Those, I think, are simple and should be merged soon. Uh, there's 10 closed issues by nine people and 10 open by 10 people, so we are even this week uh, with 591 open issues. We have 99 good first issues. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests and open issues. If you want to contribute by reviewing, check out the open pull requests. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, look at the code. Let us know if you see anything. Leave a comment. Uh, that's always helpful. And uh, after you're comfortable if, with that, um, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. You, uh, there's a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you out. We want to make sure that you can contribute in a way that works for you. Uh, in terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, uh, across all the libraries, we had 256,320 PyPI downloads. Um, the top library has 31,000 downloads to give you an idea. Um, some changes from last week. I see mini MQTT on this on the, this list of top ten, uh, and mini QR as well. Um, most of the time, the top two or three are going to stay the same, but uh, the rest of them seem to seem to bounce around. So, uh, in terms of library updates in the last seven days, there were no new libraries, and there was a whole host of uh, updated libraries that I will not read off, but they are available in the notes document. And that's what I've got. Thanks so much, Katni. Uh, up next, we're going to go to Melissa for the update on Blinka. Uh, hello. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Microsoft Python, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. Uh, this week, we had no pull requests merged. There are uh, currently five open pull requests, which I believe is down a little bit from last week. Um, 
Let's see, there was one closed issue by one person and one open by one person, a, a leaving a net of 85 open issues. There were 37,259 PI downloads in the last week, uh, 9,579 PI wheels downloads in the last week, and we are at 98 boards. And that's it. Thanks so much, Melissa. Uh, next, we're going to go to Hug Reports. Uh, Hug Reports is a chance uh, for folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond uh, to recognize them for doing awesome things. Um, I'll start, and then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. Uh, if you're text only or missing the meeting, I have Hug Reports in the notes document. I will read them off as well. Uh, so I'm going to start off by saying, uh, belated Hug Report, I missed the meeting last week, to Scott, returning from parental leave. Uh, hug Report to Katni for some good chats and feedback on guides and other work we've been working closely together the past couple weeks, uh, and also a group hug. And up next, it's going to be Dan. Okay, thanks. So uh, thanks to Jeff and Scott. We had uh, a bug triage meeting last meet for the remaining issues for 800. Uh, that was very fruitful. We moved some things out of there. Uh, we closed some things, and we assigned some things, and we said we have to scratch our heads on some things. So that's what we're doing. Uh, thanks to Katni, uh, we had a meeting to catch up on things both work and social. And it was a very nice meeting. Thank you. Um, thanks to Microdev, who's continuing to do PRs and reviews. And because of their uh, time zone difference, we often get uh, reviews overnight, which is really nice. Twenty Circuit Python is a 24-hour a day business. Um, thanks to Mikhail Kakuska. Uh, who's working on rewriting uh, the CircuitPython HTTP server, something that I wrote in a big hurry when we were trying to make a Wordle clone. Um, and uh, they're re re reworking it completely, or not completely, but a lot. It's really helpful. And thanks to Anecdata for testing and for comments uh, related to that. I'm really appreciating uh, people picking up uh, working on these libraries these network libraries, because there are people with a lot more experience than I do uh, on this kind of thing. OK. Thanks, Dan. Uh, next is going to be DJ Devin 3 I'd like to give a hug to Naradoc, Hem, Deshipu, and Anecdata for troubleshooting a multiplexer uh, I2C address conflict that I was having uh, that, had to deal, that dealt with seven-segment uh, Stemma backpacks. Uh, a hug to JP for a really neat Ask a Bachelor episode that he had to do um, to, you know, fill in a time slot, obviously. Did a great job. Um, a hug to Liz for hosting Show and Tell last week and the CircuitPython meeting today. Um, great job and good luck with your new synth project. Uh, at, well, Scott, for letting me know I don't need a VID or PID for every personal board hack that I do. Uh, and welcome back from bonding leave. It is great to have you back. Uh, and Dan H for explaining that my understanding of the dev feed was incorrect and helping me figure out Git a little bit more. Very helpful, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is gonna be Foamy Guy. All right, thanks. Um, first hug, uh, thank you to you, Liz, for hosting the meeting, and congratulations for hosting your first one, and thanks for joining the uh, group of us. Um, hug report for Deshipu, Neradoc, and Scott for some ideas, feedback, and discussion around the Display.io APIs that we talked about last week. Uh, hug report for DJ Devin uh, for working through the difficult uh, OAuth and other um, issues in the Twitch API that made it uh, a little bit more difficult than some of the prior ones. I think that's a great start for people to work from uh, moving forward, though. And a uh, group hug for everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Foamy Guy. Uh, next is going to be Jepler. Hello. I didn't write it here, but a big hug report to you for hosting the meeting. Um, I also want to thank everybody contributing to the core, but particularly Bill, 88T, and MicroDev, hug report for picking up some items that need attention. A hug report to you, Scott, for diving back in and picking up the web workflow for Raspberry Pi Pico. Um, and finally, a group hug. Uh, as many of us in the US are considering what we're thankful for, this community has been on my mind. Some of you I know well, some of you I'd like to know better. Let's keep on making the software that enables so many cool and lovely projects that we see weekly in the newsletter and beyond. And that's what I got. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next is going to be Katni. 
Thanks, Liz. Uh, first up, hug report to you for hosting this meeting for the first time. Thanks so much. Um, next, uh, hug for Tammy makes things for a lovely chat and turning a hilarious joke into an actual project idea. Uh, to Dan for a wonderful chat. It was nice to catch up. Uh, to Liz also for reviewing my recent guides and finding things I missed, writing up the code for my two upcoming projects, multiple lovely chats, and last and probably the biggest hug for being so willing to help me in many, many ways as I've been struggling lately. Uh, you are always supportive, positive, and provide excellent suggestions and feedback. Um, to my dad for coming out this past weekend to guide and help us through putting down 400 pounds of rubber flooring into the basement office. Um, to everybody I missed and a group hug, this community never ceases to amaze me. I joined mid-2017 and I am incredibly grateful for both my experience or both how both my experience and the community itself have evolved. Thank you all for being you and making this community what it is. That's what I've got. Uh, thanks so much, Kenny. Uh, next is going to be Melissa. Hello. Um, I wanted to give a hug to Foamy Guy for reviewing my CircuitPython.org DRs last week. Uh, to catch me for quickly reviewing some other PRs I submitted. Uh, to Scott for a good catch up talk about code.circuitpython.org. And uh, to you, Liz, for hosting your first meeting and a group hug to everyone else. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, next is Mark Gambler21, who is lurking. Uh, he has a hug report for Jeffler for the NeoPixel 8 and Core Pixel Map PR for speeding up NeoPixel animations a lot. And uh, Mark had a really cool demo on Show and Tell if folks want to check that out. And then next is Tammy Makes Things, who is also text only. A uh, hug report to me for hosting the meeting. Thank you. Uh, Katney for a good convo and interesting project idea. And a group hug for being an awesome community. And next up is Scott. Hello. Uh, first, a hug for you, Liz, for hosting the meeting and also for helping test uh, Glider and PyLeap, uh, which hopefully we'll get more people using soon. And then also a hug report to Katni for helping keep the internal meetings organized with Phil and Lamore out. Um, I really appreciate you sending docs and stuff out for that. So thank you. Thank you, Scott. Uh, and that was hug reports. Thanks, everyone. Uh, next up is going to be status updates. Uh, so I don't normally do a status update because I don't really do uh, dev things, but for today I will do a first time. Uh, this is my first time hosting the meeting, um, and I'm working on guides for NeoPixel BFFs. Uh, there is a new driver board in the shop and a 5x5 grid, and they kind of sandwich onto the cutie pie boards, uh, which is fun. Uh, and then uh, personal project, CircuitPython, um, I do a lot of uh, Euro rack things. Uh, so I have this idea for doing a four input, four output uh, quantizer melody maker for Euro rack. Um, so this weekend I did some initial breadboarding and coding. Uh, and so far it's going pretty decently. I had one channel working, so just got to expand from there. Um, but next up is going to be Dan. can't hear you, Dan. Are you there, Dan? It looks like his headphones are off, too. So okay. maybe he can't hear us either. Okay. Um, should I read for Dan? Yeah, why don't you just go ahead? Okay. Uh... Yeah. Uh, so Dan's uh, status update. Um, Jepler, Tan Newt, and uh, him had an 8.0.0 issue triage meeting. Uh, he fixed spy polarity equals one, spy modes two and three on RP2040, uh, found while debugging a mode three problem on Espressif. Uh, he's still investigating the Espressif problem. Uh, fixed an event channel management on SAMD21, bug caused errors on soft restart. Uh, he also fixed an off by one uh, TIMX timer reference in STM port, which caused incorrect PWM speeds. Uh, he reviewed and sometimes tested several PRs, uh, and he's continuing with 8.0.0 issues this week. Um, maybe he uh, should do another beta, so that's coming up. Uh, and next is going to be DJ Devin 3 Thank you. Uh, last week, my CircuitPython-powered Dragon Skull Mask made it into an episode of DigiKey's Maker Update, and Donald Bell and team made it look pretty epic. That was pretty cool. 
I updated my seven segment social media tracker project, added two more segments using a PCA 9548 multiplexer for a total of 10 backpacks. So by default, you only get eight addresses and adding two more means you need a multiplexer. Uh, kind of, but uh, okay. Anyway, moving on. Unfortunately, the backpacks and multiplexers use an identical and conflicting I2C address range of 0x70 to 0x77. And everyone who helped troubleshoot the issue in Discord collectively decided that if you're going to use backpacks with the multiplexers that had the conflicting addresses, just use half of the, the channels for multiplexers and half for the backpacks. You will still get 64 possible backpacks. So it's not like you're, you know, unless you're running Doom on seven segment displays, which someone has done, uh, it's not really going to be an issue. Uh, I revised an unfinished project modding a 16 megabyte flash chip onto an 8 megabyte Bluefruit Sense. Instead, we'll be going with Adafruit's new QSPY flash uh, breakout, which comes with the 16 megabyte chip. So that, and it's really cheap. It's only like two or three bucks, and you get 16 megabytes flashed on a breakout. Great deal. Um, and it comes with an existing NVM TOML definition, which is the most important part. The chip was not available when I started the project. Uh, due to the chip shortage, which is why I had to do the whole try and make my own with my own definition. It's much safer to use an existing known good chip and configuration that Adafruit came up with, plus their breakout board. It, it just makes the mod so much safer. You can test before you solder the chip onto the board. So if you're going to do, you know, hardware hacking uh, with uh, Spy Flash, especially QSpy Flash, Adafruit's, they have a product for that. Like, um, I helped Dan H clean up a final beta test for the QDPI S2 uh, Wi-Fi scanning bug. Uh, both the Feather ESP32 S2 and QDPI S2 are now stable in terms of Wi-Fi scanning. That's the only thing that I tested was just the Wi-Fi scanning. Close the issue, submit the bug, good to go. Designed a QDPI BFF specifically as a ground pinned expander. Will allow more LEDs without having to add proto board or perf board to a small project because of the footprint. You only get one ground, so the only way to add more things is to add a perf board, uh, which is what I stuck into the dragon skull mask with this big perf board thing. So I designed my own, basically my own ground plane, so I could add a whole bunch of LEDs to stuff into the dragon mask. That's where I'm at. Thank you so much. Uh, next up is going to be foamy guy. Right. Uh, last week, I started on the display I.O. changes that were discussed during the previous meeting. Um, got that working uh, minimally inside the core on Monday, and then throughout the week added little bits to it and got it tested on the on three of the d different types of displays, the uh, e-paper frame buffer displays, uh, rather e-paper uh, and frame buffer are two different kinds, and then the the standard ones, which I don't know if they have a name, but the kind of built-in ones like Pi Portal and everything. Um, it's been a nice process. I've been continuing to learn and get more comfortable with different parts of stuff inside the core uh, by making these changes. So it's been a lot of fun. Um, I set up a Twitch developer app in order to get a uh, token to test out the example that DJ Devin submitted for the request library. Um, tried that out and then also poked around through the Twitch API docs to uh, look into some of the other possibilities that are available, and I think there will be some uh, fun stuff that we can make with that uh, integrating CircuitPython into Twitch API. Um, and then uh, for this week, I'm going to look into uh, the adaptation of the pixel map uh, class that's inside LED animation to try to work with the new one that Jeff is working on inside the core. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, next up is going to be Jeff. Hi again. So a reminder for those of you using Mastodon, I'm on Mastodon. My um, tag or whatever it is, is in the notes doc. So I welcome a follow from anybody in the community. I don't necessarily post a lot of CircuitPython stuff. I do post a lot of computer generated images and boost a lot of posts by people who are doing stuff that sounds interesting to me. Uh, but now down to business. Um, the big thing is we identified this problem where the internal buffer, like if your CircuitPython program is running but not reading from the UART, and you dump a bunch of data through the USB connection, then there's really no way to control C because we can't receive that control C when the buffer's full. Um, there is a serial protocol, like back to the RS-232 days, called a break signal. Um, and so I added support for 
everything that uses uh, tiny USB and for the ESP32 S2 so that we can use this break signal as an alternative keyboard interrupt source. Um, I hope that programs like Thani and Moo that make uh, USB connections and want to send keyboard interrupts can switch to using this as an alternative, but I haven't like opened a dialogue with MicroPython seeing if they want to add support for this or to Thani and Moo telling them this is an option that you'll have with CircuitPython 8. So I don't know how that will actually play out. Um, and also it looks like it may not work on the C3, so um, which is a board that uses its own internal USB to serial converter and doesn't have full uh, USB HID. Anyway, so that was kind of the most interesting thing. Um, I made draft pull requests for three upcoming products. The board designs are expected to change, uh, which is why those are in draft status. Uh, but in most respects, the boards worked well. One way they did not work well is ESP32 S3. Uh, I squared C had a problem with the Mac 1704X battery gauge chip. Um, there is a workaround, and I open an issue about that. I um, also did a number of other uh, pull requests and acted on other people's pull requests. In NeoPixelate library, that now supports from one to eight strings. The reason you'd want to use that with just one string is it allows you to write the pixels in the background while you're updating your animation. Uh, so you can still get a speed boost from it even when you're using just one strand of LEDs. Um, there's more in the notes doc if you want to check that out. Um, Anyway, on to this week. I'm going to concentrate on the next keyboard to USB HID adapter project on this short week. Um, I'm going to try to be out on Thursday through Sunday, although usually, you know, I, I have Discord open. I pick up CircuitPython stuff for a little bit here and there. Um, so I'll be around, but um, yeah, that's what's up with me. It seems like plenty. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next is going to be Katni. All right, so last week, uh, the quick STEM IQT hub guide went into moderation. I reviewed all of Liz's guides and guide update. Um, by the end of the week, the Pi Cowbell guide and the STEM hub guides were published. Um, blogged up the last three guides I published. Um, added a NeoPixel Rainbow IO simple test to the NeoPixel library. It's obviously geared at the um, 5x5 BFF NeoPixel grid, um, but changing a pin would make it work with, with any uh, NeoPixels. I uh, fixed up the ESP32 CircuitPython install template that I wrote uh, per Lamore's notes in, in our internal uh, tracker. Um, started the code of conduct update process document. This is going to be linked in the code of conduct um, and it will explain the process that we go through every time we made it, make an update to the code of conduct because we use um, GitHub and we use uh, pull requests so that anyone in the community can be involved and uh, provide suggestions and feedback and so on. Um, but not everybody knows how to use GitHub and not everybody knows that we do all this stuff publicly. So I want to provide a document that we can link to that actually walks through the entire process so that folks who want to be involved uh, can be, even if they're new to the whole concept. And um, I received and looked over Liz's code for my project guides. I have two project guides coming up. Liz uh, was doing the code for both of them. I made comments and we'll be chatting uh, soon, which is actually after this meeting. Um, this week, short week, obviously, uh, chatting with Liz after this meeting. Starting on the holiday countdown uh, project, it's three, um, 14 segment uh, LED um, stomach QT backpacks um, all wired together and uh, it will be scrolling the countdown to Christmas. And um, to that end, I need to uh, talk to Noah and Pedro who are doing the case for this project. Um, I'm possibly gonna put a PR in for the code of conduct updates, which doesn't include the update process document. We did make some updates recently, um, but I haven't put the PR in for them yet. And on Tuesday, I'll be meeting with Alec about his latest Databot Pi PI stats PR, but that should be pretty quick, and that's what I've got. Thank you, Katni. Uh, next is going to be Melissa. Uh, hello. Uh, last week, I added more features to the Python shell library, and I continued uh, adding, updating installer shell scripts over to Python. 
and then I added an edit link fix to circuitpython.org, which wasn't working for some boards. I updated the UC8151D e-ink CircuitPython driver um, and updated the 2.9 inch tricolor e-ink guide. This week I'm starting on more, getting back into the code.circuitpython.org work. And um, I still need to update the CircuitPython EPD library and the Python part of the guide for the 2.9 inch tricolor e -ink. And that's where I'm at. Thank you. Uh, next is Tammy Makes Things status update. She's text only, so I'll read for her. Uh, last week, she worked a bit on figuring out how to add nRPM support to the Adafruit MIDI library. Uh, she's still researching this. She was out of town for a memorial celebration for a friend, so didn't get much time to work on CircuitPython this past weekend. Uh, this week, she's hoping to move forward with the nRPM stuff for Adafruit MIDI and do some PR reviews. Uh, researching the HDMI CEC Consumer Equipment Control Protocol and designing a Bluetooth activated HDMI kill switch. Also investigating the existing HDMI CEC bridge chips that exist to see if she can find one that can be controlled over I2C rather than implementing the protocol herself. Uh, she's also going to be making a scrolling text Christmas tree ornament for a coworker who made a lovely laser cut ornament for her. Very nice. Uh, and then next up is Scott. Hello. Um... I, as of Friday, I was caught up on email, the forum, and Discord. I have not done that today, so I'm not caught up yet. Um, I met with Jeff and Dan for issue triage for 8.0. Um, I met with Melissa for code.circuitpython.org code stuff, um, and I'm going to try it with the Pico W this week, which um, <clears throat> I dove into getting web workflow working on the Pico W and got pages loading and serial terminal working. Um, that's all without doing MDNS, so the circuitpython.local thing doesn't work yet. Um, but you can do it by IP. Um, there's a working branch there, and I'm hoping to have a PR out by the end of tomorrow um, that will merge it in without MDNS um, because I will be out Thursday, Friday, and some of Wednesday. Uh, I tend to make apple pie on Wednesdays before Thanksgiving, um, so I'm not always around. Um, I also made comments on two issues, one for the coprocessor API and one for the analog buff IO API. So I may follow up with those issues later, uh, yeah, like next week or the week after to, to get those updated for 8.0 as well. So that's it for me. Thank you, Scott. Uh, that's going to do it for status updates. Uh, next, we're going to go into In the Weeds. Uh, which right now I'm not seeing anything in the weeds, but feel free to add things while I read the description. Uh, in the weeds is an opportunity for more long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or the folks have identified ahead of time. If you have any in the weeds topics, please make sure they get added while we're discussing other things, so we're not waiting around to see if anyone has topics. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything in the weeds, uh, but I'll give folks maybe a second or two to chime in via mic just in case. All right, uh, then we're going to go into the wrap up. Uh, so this has been the CircuitPython weekly meeting for November 21st, 2022. Uh, thank you everyone who participated. Uh, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing one from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. Uh, the video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontroller newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. It will be out tomorrow. Uh, the next meeting will be held next Monday, as usual, at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and this meeting is held in the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafruit.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. We hope to see you all next week. Thanks, everyone, and a big thank you to everyone uh, since this was my first meeting I hosted. Hope everyone has a good rest of the week.